Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to another awesome workshop and uh, very excited to have you all over here and with me I have obviously Dan today. So yeah. excited to uh, excited to do it. Any uh, any uh, housekeeping? I, I this is going to be really cool. I think I think people will really enjoy it. Yep, I I'm just uh, setting the stage. So we have done two workshops till now. Uh, one is on Linux and Docker. That was workshop one. Second workshop uh, on Kubernetes. So make sure to check them out both. Great content. Six and a half hours Linux Kubernetes workshop. Four hours, sorry, Linux Docker. Four hours of Kubernetes. Completely hands-on. You can try all those workshops um, in the scenarios and the commands which are given on Killer Coda. Uh, big shout out to Kim for helping us out with the workshops. Uh, today is uh, a workshop on GitOps with Argo CD. So we'll be learning, uh, you know, the basic principles of GitOps, Argo CD, how it is used. So basic understanding of the previous workshops is kind of the prerequisite. prerequisite. That is why they were sequenced in a way so that uh, when you reach this workshop, you have the knowledge of the previous workshop. So, uh, so excited for this one because GitOps is not only the buzzword right now, it's something which is used in practice, in production, um, you know, at many big enterprises, small startups, like at all scales. So it is something that when you enter into the DevOps ecosystem uh, and the Kubernetes world, you should be knowing about the GitOps principles and one of the top projects and uh, the wide, most widely used one is Argo. So Argo CD, but Argo itself is an umbrella of different set of projects. Um, like Dan will be sharing all about um, GitOps, Argo CD. Uh, he has created lab environments for you to, to actually try it out. And the best part is uh, if you stay till the end, then you go from here certified. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty cool and pretty amazing. So you have, um, you know, uh, the learning, you have the practice that you will be doing. You have the environments to do the practice and you'll go uh, certified after the workshop. How cool uh, it can be. I mean, you are getting the best and best and best and this is like at no cost. So make sure to kind of share this video as much as you can because uh, once we get started, it will be you know difficult to rewind and uh, you know, scroll afterwards. So my name is Sayam Patak and uh, this is uh, the YouTube channel and these are Cube Simplify workshops that you are seeing. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, that, that obviously gives me motivation to do more and more. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this, this workshop. And today we are having Dan. Uh, Dan is well known in the Cloud Native ecosystem and uh, everybody, in, especially in the GitOps uh, domain, uh, he's also the co-founder of uh, CodeFresh. Uh, that company who pioneers in, in GitOps ecosystem, especially. So I think um, Dan comes with a lot of experience, expertise uh, in this domain. So that's why he's the perfect pick for this particular workshop. And I hope uh, you will get lots of knowledge, lots of hands-on certification, lots of learning. Uh, now, a few things. There is like a couple of other folks who are there, uh, Costas and Christian from CodeFresh team, uh, who will be help will be there to help you moderating uh, your questions so you can join kubesimplify.com slash discord there's a workshops channel and any questions or screenshots that you want to post you can uh, you know post over there and uh, they'll be able to help you out also you can take advantage of the youtube chat uh, but obviously you cannot post links and uh, pictures in youtube chat so that's why you can move to the discord channel for that uh, but anyways any questions feel free to put them in and the YouTube chat and the chat is being moderated uh, by Cube Simplify ambassadors. Uh, so please do not post anything offensive. Obviously, it's you know it's a healthy live stream. We are here to learn. So please uh, you know be respectful to each other and uh, do not share anything which is against uh, uh, anyone or you know against anything. So anything unethical will be removed uh, by the ambassadors. And we have a few people from CodeFresh who will be monitoring the YouTube chat as well and trying to answer all your queries so with that let's get started so dan uh, thank you so much first of all for tuning in please introduce yourself to the community thank you yeah what a great great intro so yeah my name is dan garfield uh like sam said and um this course is something that was created actually by costas uh primarily he's our he's our main course author and uh he's going to be in the chat and help answer questions and stuff so big shout out to him um christian joining us uh 
as uh, he runs our developer experience program and is, is also very knowledgeable in this stuff. So he's going to be helping out as well. So we have between the three of us, you know, I think we'll be able to answer all the questions uh, that, that people can throw at us um, for this, uh, for this workshop, we are going to be using the, this lab environment. And uh, what's really cool about this is uh, this is going to give you, um, you know, a lot of times when I, in the past, when I've gone to do workshops, the thing that I always run into is that everybody's machines are different and they don't necessarily install the tools you ask them to install. And, and maybe there's some misconfiguration. And so half the workshop ends up being helping people with their individual computers, just, you know, track down the components they need. Um, this is going to take all of that out of the, the equation, because if you go to codefresh.io slash Argo slash get certified, you'll be able to not only follow along, but it'll actually give you uh, environments in browser. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is something that CodeFresh is very happy to donate to help people learn how to do GitOps and do Argo CD. So big shout out to CodeFresh for paying for that. Um, so uh, those those environments uh, we've already paid for them. So uh, you got to use them. <laughs> They're paid for whether you use them or not. So so go jump in and uh, and start uh, working with us here. Um, as we use the as we go through the certification. So the average time it takes somebody to do the certification. It's about four hours. We have a uh, little under 90 minutes. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a selection of the inter uh, the exercises and the training together. And then we'll get into um, uh, wherever, wherever we end when we run out of time. Um, the course is self-directed. You'll be able to run it yourself. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Today Was Awesome. Uh, you can hit up Costas. Um, who is Code Pipes on Twitter? You can hit up uh, Christian, who is um, Christian. I wanted to say you're like C Hernandez, but that's not that's not right. It's a, it's like <clears throat> he's gonna post it in the chat. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's let's just post them all in the chat. In the um, we'll put them in the Discord. And uh, if you're if you're joining us on YouTube, uh, like Sam said, um, it's best to be in the Discord because we can post links and stuff. So without further ado, I've been leaving this link up here. I posted the link in the chat. Hopefully all of you are, are going and jumping in and, and just uh, starting the, the, you just need to sign up. And then uh, once you've, once you're into your account, you're going to be able to start following along on the exercises with us. So all of that, let's talk about GitOps. Uh, there is actually a standard for GitOps. So uh, this is something that uh, we found we started under the CNCF. Uh, CodeFresh did this in partnership with GitHub, Azure, Red Hat, WeaveWorks, and Amazon. Um, started it about a year and a half ago, and we had a huge influx of interest and in people who wanted to help us establish GitOps principles. And I'm very happy to tell you that we actually do have the V1 GitOps principles, which is what this workshop really is based on. Is these GitOps principles. So it's not enough just to be deploying software and using Argo CD. Uh, we want to do it in the in the most scalable, most effective kind of way. And interestingly, from the teams that adopt GitOps, what I've seen uh, is that teams that adopt GitOps tend to deploy more frequently. They, they experience less downtime. They have fewer uh, service disruptions um, and they're able to recover from failure much more quickly. Um, I also uh, recently uh, had the privilege to talk to get get some stats around um, how quickly it allows people to onboard their teams. P teams that adopt GitOps uh, are able to onboard their teams much more quickly into their projects and uh, in some cases cutting down the onboarding time by up to 80%. So there are a lot of really great benefits for doing GitOps. And I think this is going to become clear once you see how GitOps is operating. So um, the GitOps principles, there are four of them. Uh, and these all describe how a system and its desired state should be. So what's a desired state? Desired state, uh, you know, you, you guys have been doing the workshops around Kubernetes. And so uh, the idea that you have kind of state management and it's declarative and these kinds of stuff that should be somewhat familiar to you. So the desired state of your system is uh, a description of how the system should be operating. Now, whether or not it's operating that way, that's a whole different story, but how it should be operating. And uh, for all of our systems, we do want them to be declarative. 
Um, declarative simply means that you have a description of how your system is supposed to operate uh, rather than an imperative list of instructions for how to get it to operate that way. So uh, a good example um, uh, uh, of those two systems is when I tell, give my kids their chores, I tell them we need to water the garden. That is, uh, and if I were to express it declaratively, I, I would say the water should be gardened for at least 15 minutes, something like that. The, the garden should be watered for 15 minutes. There, there's the declarative statement. Now, an imperative instruction would be go out to the backyard, go hook up the hose, uh, bring the hose over and set it up so that the sprinkler is in the garden, turn on the hose, make sure that the water is covering the entire garden, monitor this uh, for a time of 15 minutes, and then go back and shut off the water, put the hose away, put the sprinkler away. So that's an imperative instruction. Now, because my kids are smart, I can give them a declarative instruction. The garden should be watered for 15 minutes and they can figure out how to move the hose around and stuff like that. So having your system declaratively described, very important, very basic. Most people already get this. If you're using uh, infrastructure as code, you probably get this. Um, this is, this is uh, if you're using Kubernetes, you're gonna get this um, because all of Kubernetes is managed declaratively. So that's easy peasy, you know, step one. Uh, principle number two is versioned and immutable. So that means that all of that desired state that is done in a declarative format should be versioned and immutable. And in GitOps, the name is GitOps because most of the time that's going to be in Git. Now, you don't have to use Git necessarily. You just need something to be versioned and immutable. And if you're doing that, um, what that means isn't just that you're storing the configuration in Git. It also means that the configuration is done in such a way as to be versionable. So give me, let me give you an example. Uh, many of you have done, uh, I think all of you have done Kubernetes deployments at this point. Uh, it's very common. Um, I very commonly see new people to Kubernetes creating deployments where they reference an image and the tag is latest. Okay, well, that means that you no longer are versioning your configuration because somebody can push a new image and it'll automatically deploy it and if you need to, if there's some kind of issue and you need to roll back, you can't just do a git revert because that's not what caused the configuration change. So that in that case, it wouldn't really be versioned. So everything within your system should be versioned. Uh, okay, and then uh, number three, pulled automatically. So, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna be doing the fundamentals certification. That's right, that's what we're gonna be, that's what we're gonna be doing today. The level two certification, which is GitOps at scale, is planned for release at ArgoCon. So uh, if you're not going to be at ArgoCon, now is a great time to register. Just do a quick shout out for ArgoCon 2022. It's in September uh, 19th. Um, if you can't be in California, it is also virtual. So uh, register for the virtual schedule. And um, you can also uh, register for the, the level two certification and go do that there. Um, okay, so principle number three is pulled automatically. Now, this is a, this is a pretty big uh, kind of brain shift from the way that software delivery has worked in the past. So typically, software delivery sort of works uh, with a push mechanism. So you have some kind of CI/CD process. It builds your your application, it and then it connects to your deployment environment, and it sends the target package to that deployment environment, whatever, whatever that is, and, and installs it and, and keeps it going. Uh, that system um, has a number of drawbacks, uh, which is, you know, often they're more fragile. Often they, they have to be imperative operations, um, which is a problem because with GitOps, we need things to be declarative, not imperative, right? So with uh, pulled automatically, what we typically see is that you have a GitOps agent that is sitting on your target runtime or connected to your target runtime uh, more or less permanently. So you could have like a Kubernetes cluster managing several other Kubernetes clusters, that kind of thing. And it is constantly checking the source of truth, which is Git. Git is the source of truth. And it's checking the live environment, the actual, uh, the actual state, and is constantly comparing those two and it's automatically pulling that configuration to see if there are any actions that need to happen. Um, this also solves issues with networking. 
Uh, this also solves issues with imperative processes breaking down because you don't need to rely on them anymore because it's always going to be aware of the desired state it should have so that it can do principle number four, which is continuously reconcile them. So uh, oftentimes what we see happening in organizations that aren't doing GitOps is there's some issue in production. Somebody connects to the production environment. They make some change and they go about their day. Uh, because they fixed the, the issue. Well, that's a problem because now you have your actual state that's different than the desired state that we have put into Git. And uh, the next time you know something gets pushed, maybe that gets overwritten, or uh, maybe we haven't recorded it, or maybe it wasn't properly audited, or maybe the change in production represents somebody gaining unauthorized access to our system, or uh, maybe the change that uh, is there represents an upgrade of some kind, but uh, it's not covered by what's under our system. So we actually don't know that it exists because it's not in our source of truth. So continuously reconciled actually means, okay, I'm aware of what's happening in production, I'm aware of my actual state. I'm aware of my desired state. And I'm going to reconcile those and apply the desired state to my system. Uh, so these are the GitOps principles. There's only four of them. So they're pretty easy to remember. Uh, declarative, versioned and immutable, pulled automatically, continuously reconciled. You can read up more about these things. You can get a little bit more in depth about it at opengitops.dev. Good link to hang on to. Uh, and with that... We can actually, I think, get into the certification. So if you haven't, uh, oh, 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 one more thing. Um, the tool we're going to be using today is a tool called Argo CD. And we're also going to be using Argo rollouts, uh, time permitting. Depends on how much I spend talking on these slides. Sorry. Um, the tool that we're going to be using is Argo CD. And there's a lot of reasons for why we're going to use Argo CD. Argo CD is far and away the most popular GitOps tool in the world today. And it is also the fastest growing. Uh, if you haven't starred the repo, go star the repo. Geez, this is out of date. We just passed 10,000 on Argo CD. So this uh, this slide was from February. We're in July. We just passed 10,000. Um, so uh, it, yeah, you can see that it's a, a very quickly growing project. The Argo project is made up of four projects, Argo workflows, Argo events, Argo CD, and Argo rollouts. Argo workflows and Argo events are really uh, more about um, doing pipelines and uh, data pipelines and uh, CICD pipelines with um, Kubernetes. Argo CD and Argo rollouts are, are uh, really GitOps tooling. That's what we're going to be using today. Um, so with all that, I think we've got enough preamble. So let's jump into, uh, let's jump into our course. So if you've logged in to your uh, course, um, uh, uh, what, what, if you've created the account that we asked you to create, this is the course overview page. And this is going to allow us to start going through and doing some of these exercises. So um, we're going to go in and, and again, uh, keep the chat going, keep the conversation going. Uh, you know, Kostas and, and Christian don't want to get too bored. Um, they really want to answer questions and, and talk to people. They've heard me talk plenty of times, so they, they don't care about hearing that anymore. So uh, we're going to start with, we just covered uh, the GitOps uh, theory, and uh, there is a quiz you can take to make sure you understand it. We're not going to take the quiz together, um, but each section has uh, instruction, uh, exercises, and a quiz uh, to make sure you understand it. And at the very end, there is a test that you can take so when we're done with this today, um, there's a pretty good chance that if you've uh, uh, imbibed, you know, all of the uh, material that we've talked about, you'll be able to go and just take the test. Um, if you feel like you need to brush up on any sections, you can go back and work on these other sections. So uh, all of you should have access to jump to the individual sections within the course. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So uh, we're going to start with uh, the second uh, section here, and we're going to go through and install Argo CD uh, so we can create an application and sync it, um, and that will that will show us uh, exactly how it works. So let's jump straight into the live exercise, and we're going to do a uh, Argo CD installation here. 
and then we'll talk about uh, how this would work. So this is going to put you into this hands-on lab here. And let's go ahead and launch this. Uh, this is going to take uh, up to two minutes. It should be pretty quick because we did uh, actually uh, put a bunch of these. A um, bunch of these are on hot start right now. So they should go pretty quick. I see it's provisioning. It's still spinning up all the instances for how many you need. Let me know what kind of times you're getting uh, in the chat um, as you get into this step. I'm curious if, if anybody's getting more than two minutes, um, let me know. But it should be pretty quick. Um, while this is spinning up, what we're going to do here is we're just going to use uh, the Argo CLI and a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and we're going to be doing a simple Kubernetes manifest installation of Argo CD. Now, in the real world, uh, let's think about this for a second. Remember, we just didn't get an introduction to GitOps. Well, what's the problem with just applying the manifest to the cluster? Well, that means that Argo CD is not actually deployed using GitOps. <laughs> so how do we inception that nugget? Well, guess what, folks? Argo CD can actually manage itself. So if you deploy Argo CD, you can add an application to Argo CD, which is Argo CD, which will allow you to uh, manage and update it. Um, you can also use a Helm chart that's available and Argo CD Autopilot, I mean, it's worth talking about this for one second uh, while we're letting this spin up. This is a pretty cool project that uh, basically bootstraps Argo CD with it in managing itself and connects it to a Git repo um, and allows you to, uh, to rock and roll um, from, from kind of day one, day zero, day zero, day zero rock and rolling uh, with GitOps. Um, oh, you know what, too? I have, I don't know why I have, I'm using Brave Browser, so hopefully this doesn't reset my counter. Go back in. It could just take a second. All right. Let's see, anything else we should cover while this is uh, spinning up? How are your times looking in the, uh, in the, in the, in the chat? How are the times looking, folks? Let me go over to the YouTube really quick and see, see what's up. Check the chat for a moment. We've got a couple of these exercises to spin up. They should be they should be pretty quick. They've uh, it says they're all provisioning right now. Oh, maybe the provisioning time takes longer than I uh, anticipated. I see that a bunch of these are ready to use, but the. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so the first exercise is going a little bit slower. Yeah, it uh, it looks like in the environment provisioning that um, it has a bunch of environments ready to use that are the uh, the last exercises that we'll do. Well, that's not as useful. Um, yeah, let's give it let's give it uh, ninety seconds here, and, and see if it gets spun up. It'd be a short workshop if uh, if the environments don't spin up. Um, I did a, a workshop one time with uh, uh, <laughs> with uh, a cloud provider. I'm not going to say which one, uh, but we we did this live workshop, and so we had a room full of like 130 people. And um, right, and we were doing this workshop with the cloud provider. And right when we started to do the workshop, the cloud provider went down. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were like trying to get people into the platform to start doing stuff and their cloud provider was literally gone. Um, yeah, talk more. Yeah, okay. So let's talk a little bit about Argo theory here for a second and um, talk about the synchronization flow, which we can go into, maybe we can just go into the reconciliation loop for a minute. Let's do that. Uh, let's go back to the course page. No. No, new window. I said new window. <laughs> oh, painful. I'm sorry, guys. You can't open a new window. It's good to know. All right, let's start it again. Okay. So let's go to, uh, let's talk about the, uh, so while, while this exercise is open, 
Um, just leave the. Oh, actually, mine is mine is ready, so I'm just gonna start it. We're just gonna start it. Uh, again, post post what kind of times you're seeing um, in the chat. Would like to see it. So, all right, pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna for, we're actually once you're into the environment, you're gonna be you're gonna have in your browser um, a Kubernetes cluster already provided, and you've got the Argo CD CLI already installed. Oh, I thought you did, but we don't need we don't we don't need it right now. So let's uh, let's go ahead and create um, a namespace for Argo CD, and then we're going to apply the manifests here. These are the installation manifests. Uh, Argo CD does have a um, high availability version. So if you plan to scale it, you can use that. And then uh, if you're looking for a control plane for many instances of Argo, CodePress has got your back. So now that this is installed, you can see it's installed all our custom resource definitions and our role bindings and a config map and all this stuff. So Argo CD is now installed and rocking and rolling. Uh, and we can go ahead and check and make sure the pods are all spinning up. So we can see that this server is spinning up. It's going to take a second here. Uh, I can see that the sandboxes are starting to like come online over here on my dashboard. So it looks like they're, they're provisioning, uh, in the can, future, can you increase the font size, please increase it. Yeah. It's just too small. Like the whole chat is with it. Please increase the font size. There we go. <laughs> uh, I think that that's, that's comfortable. Is that good? Everybody happy? Please put thumbs up in the chat. If the font looks good. Okay. Uh, all right. So, like I said, it's going to take a second for the server to spin up. Here we go. It's all ready. So now that we've got our servers ready, we're net ready to go to the next step. And one of the cool things about this workshop is that when you hit next, it actually uh, checks um, to make sure that you've actually done the thing that you were supposed to do. Okay, so by default, Argo CD is only accessible from inside the cluster. So we actually need to expose the UI to our users. Uh, in production, we recommend an ingress. Um, you can use a load balancer, uh, which has some additional cost. Um, and then you can use node port, which is simple and not flexible. I most often when I'm using Argo CD personally, I just do port forwarding every time I need to connect to it uh, just because uh, it's a simple you know, uh, method. But uh, of course, ingress is, is recommended for production. For us, um, we're going to do it very simply and we're just going to create a service.yaml. You can see the service.yaml is here and uh, we're actually just going to set up a node port because um, we have a... Uh, we, we know what the, the what the IP is and, and all this stuff. So it's going to be really easy for, for us. So we're going to do kubectl uh, apply service.yaml to deploy our service. And that's it. Now we've exposed it so we can actually go and log into the Argo CD UI. So I'm going to hit the next one. Um, Argo CD also supports single sign-on. So you can add in uh, like uh, Google is a single sign-on or your, your work or whatever. Um, when you first uh, when you first create Argo CD, there is a secret that is generated, which is the Argo CD initial admin secret. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to grab that secret. So we can just see it like this. So you can see this initial admin secret. This in this includes a password that you can use. Now, um, this is an environment that's private to me. I don't mind showing it to you. So let's go ahead and get that get that secret. Uh, if you don't want to do, so you can see we're doing this JSON path and automatically putting it out and putting it into this admin password. But if you inspect the secret directly, uh, Argo CD initial admin secret demo. Uh, you can see it'll actually put um, all the information out here and you could go in and manually uh, did I do the initial admin secret? Yeah, I did. Oh, you can just output it. Anyway, so we, we created the this uh, admin pass.txt um, so we can go output that and you can see this is my 
default admin password that I've just generated. You're going to have your own. Um, and now we can actually click on, just copy this really quick. Uh, the Argo CD up here, you have a tab that's going to put you into the Argo CD uh, UI and we can log into that. It just logs you in automatically. So there you go. So we can see we've got Argo CD deployed and running and we've got our secret already. So we're ready to actually start deploying applications. Um, Argo CD does have that great UI, but they also have a CLI uh, and you can also do everything that we're going to do declaratively, which we'll show you in a second. So the first thing, uh, we're going to install the CLI just by curling um, this address and uh, doing it that way. And you can, uh, if you if you lose the instructions, you can just Google Argo CD CLI. I'll tell you how to do it. Argo CD help. There we go. We can see that's running properly. And uh, we've got it installed. So let's move on to the next step. Um, so we're going to authorize against our Argo CD instance using the Argo CD login. So Argo CD login, and here we've we've just got on our local host. This is just going to be whatever the address is of where your uh, cluster is, and we're going to do insecure because we're using a self-signed certificate. Um, in production, obviously, you're going to want to use a real one. So we're going to go to admin. And let's see if I still, oh, I don't still have the, uh, <laughs> I still don't have the password stored there. So let's go into the editor, look at the admin pass. We'll just copy it here. Go back and we'll do it again. Admin password. There we go. Now we're logged in and, and we can, uh, we can minimize the left portion so that we can get more terminal size and then you can increase. You go even better. bigger. Got it. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thanks for the thanks for the ad, ad, advice here. All right. So uh, now that we're logged in, we can actually run some commands. So, for example, let's do Argo CD app list. This will show us all the applications we have installed. Guess what? We don't have any installed because we haven't installed any. So let's install an application, um, and so we can actually start, you know, seeing how this works. So that's going to be the next exercise. So go ahead and click next and next again. And next again, and now we'll get into this uh, environment. So we're gonna launch this environment now. It'll take just a second. Let me go back down. And while this is uh, installing, we'll talk a little bit about um, Argo CD applications and how they work. So uh, the idea of an application in Argo CD is it's basically um, an entity that describes a, uh, desired state for, for your application. So an application can be a set of Kubernetes resources. It can be a Helm chart. It can be a customization, um, or it can be a grouping of many of those things. So you can actually have an application that is a bunch of applications. We call that app of apps. Uh, you can also have um, applications generated programmatically using application sets, which isn't something we're gonna cover in the course. But an application set basically says, where is my configuration for my application stored? Where are the manifests? They're over here. And where should they be getting deployed to? That should be this target cluster or these target clusters and these namespaces. And then all of the policy around that application. Should this be synced automatically? Should it uh, pull frequently? Um, should it do any special jobs before the synchronization happens, after the synchronization happens? And the synchronization process basically is saying, checking what's in Git and checking what's in uh, your actual state and then trying to apply the desired state as defined in Git. Um, looking at the questions, there's a question. We are getting five net pull with default installation, is it to avoid any mishappening with Argo resources? Um, so yeah, I think I think the the question you're asking is basically like, is this environment fully set up uh, in a production ready way? Not exactly. I mean, um, don't don't stress too much about how Argo CD is installed here. We did it. We did some some tricks and things to make it work well with the lab environment. Uh, so when it goes 
comes to actually deploying Argo CD yourself, you know, just follow the official instructions. You, you won't have any problems. Now, if you don't want to use a, uh, if you don't want to uh, install your own version of Argo CD and manage it, um, CodeFresh actually has a hosted version of Argo CD that you can use. So you just create an account and you'll be using the hosted version. Um, so just to talk about that for one second while we're letting this provision, uh, if I go to codefresh.io, um, if you create an account right now and I've un we've unlocked this for the moment, you're going to be able to actually use our hosted environment. This actually officially launches on Thursday. Uh, so um, come, to, uh, come to our launch event uh, on July 28th um, and we'll actually show off the hosted version of the platform and you can try it out there. So let's go back. All right, we're ready to go. So let's let's get going with the CLI here. Uh, or sorry, let's go. Let's get going uh, deploying an application. So we've got an, a sample application um, that uh, just has a simple deployment and service for our example. Uh, let's increase our font size again. There we go. That should be one more even. Get aggressive with it. I can't move it. Oh, I can. Ooh, look at that. All right, so we're ready to deploy this application. So we're getting uh, Argo CD is still getting set up. Start. Okay. So we've got our Argo CD UI. This is going to have you logged in by default, so you don't have to do it again. And we've got our shell. So um, let's go use the UI tab, and we're going to create an application. And the application name is going to be demo. The project is going to be default. Uh, projects are, are groupings within Argo CD. They can define the destination, uh, 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 the role-based access control for who can deploy to projects, all kinds of things like that. And we're going to leave this on manual sync. And we're going to go down. We're not going to check any of these boxes. We'll cover those maybe in a minute. Uh, we'll get our repository URL here. Copy that. Put that in. Uh, we're going to leave it at head. So it's just going to take the latest version. Um, and then we've got our path, which is just going to be slash simple app. And our target destination cluster is going to be kubernetes.default.svc. This, this service, this is a DNS name that lives within Kubernetes, every Kubernetes cluster that just basically means it's connecting directly to the cluster uh, API and running. We're going to put in the default namespace. Um, if we wanted to put in a different namespace, we could, but we would need to check auto create namespace, which would allow it to automatically deploy. But, but don't do that because uh, we're actually going to be checking you know, uh, your exercise to make sure it's been done properly. So now that we've done all of that, we're going to hit create. And you'll see that an application now has spun up here and it is currently out of sync. That's fine. That's exactly what we ex expected. So now that we've got it there, we've created it. Uh, let's go ahead and um, click into it. And you can see that within the application is expecting to have a service and a, and a deployment um, up and running. And if we look at the summary and the diff, you can see that the live manifest, there isn't one because it hasn't been synchronized yet. We don't have auto sync turned on. So let's double check this. And it's going to make sure, hey, we've, we've got our application deployed. Great. So now we're going to be ready to um, actually synchronize it. So let's go back to our Argo CD UI. And let's actually hit sync. And uh, you can uh, prune resources means get rid of any resources that are no longer described in Git. That's not going to be an issue for us. We could do a dry run to see what it's going to look like. Um, we could do a force. Uh, we can skip schema validation. Um, all of those kinds of things. Or we can do a replace. The replace action is actually one that's uh, sometimes very useful if your manifests are way too long to do an update. That happens sometimes when people go to use like uh, the Prometheus stack. Anyway, let's let's synchronize this. It's going to synchronize both these resources. So now this changes to progressing, and we can see that the service and deployment are deployed, and we can see the uh, the endpoint and the resource group and the pod. They're all up and running. So we've got everything that we need to have happen. And of course, we can check inside of uh, our CLI and see that they're all deployed. We can also do 
K Git apps because Argo CD applications, oh, sorry, Git applications, Argo CD, oh, that, sorry, they're in the uh, Argo CD namespace. Um, you can see that our, our application is actually a custom resource within Kubernetes. Uh, so it, uh, it exists on its own, pretty cool. Uh, so now we've got our app deployed up here in the tab. You can see there's a deployed app. So here we see it. Hey, it's running, great. We love to see it. All right. So we've deployed our first application. Now we've done all of this in the UI. So it actually is not done uh, declaratively. Um, so in that sense, we're actually missing maybe one of the GitOps principles. So we'll get into that in a second. But uh, first things first, let me make sure that sync the application. Actually, um, we could delete this. We might skip this exercise. Yeah, we, we can delete our application, et cetera. Great. Let's actually go. Let's see. We're, we're going to go into. I'm just checking where we're at on this. Oh, application health. Oh, sync strategies. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did want to talk about sync strategies for a moment. So let's let's actually stick stick in the exercise uh, for, for, for the moment. So um, let's delete the application. And we could actually just delete the custom resource as well. Uh, and we're going to delete all of its resources. So that means it's going to delete everything that's deployed with it. And um, once that's done, we can actually deploy this all using the terminal. So this is all the exact same configuration that we just did in the UI, just doing it with the terminal, recreating it, but now as demo two. And uh, again, we could do Argo CD list apps, uh, Argo CD list, Argo CD list. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, I almost always just use this. Let's just app list. I'm getting mixed up here. So you can see it's just got Argo, uh, uh, De uh, de a demo two installed. We could also do kgit uh, applications, grow CD, and see there's only one application. This one's currently out of sync. It hasn't been synced, so let's sync it. It just progressed and looks like it's probably all done. We can check there. It's all healthy. Okay, great. So and can you increase the font a bit? Oh yes. Yeah, sorry. Keep asking. I'll I'll keep I'll keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you can do it all in the CLI. Uh, let's skip the quiz and let's um, talk for a moment about the reconciliation loop. By default, Argo CD is going to sync every three minutes. So every three minutes, it's going to uh, figure out all of the applications that are marked uh, auto sync and it will sync them automatically. And it will also fetch the latest Git state from every repository, compare it, and depending on the sync policy, it will either update it or it will just mark it as out of sync. So let's actually look at this for a moment because if you're doing GitOps, you really want to be doing it with um, declaratively, right? So you want to you want to just simply describe your application uh, and have that checked into Git, have that synced to Argo CD, and then having that start syncing all of your um, your actual applications in the end. Uh, let's talk for a moment. Actually, this is a good good time to talk about repos. repos. Um, so let me go over to this view. Um, this is the typical uh, flow that we'd like to see for teams um, doing, doing GitOps. So typically, you want to have your application directory, your application Git repo, separated from your runtime uh, YAMLs and things like that. And so what you typically do is you update your application. Excuse me. You update your application uh, and then, you know, you push a new uh, Docker image or, or whatever. And then, excuse me, you generate your manifests into your runtime repo where your application uh, definition is, is typically defined as well. And then you have Argo CD working as the operator to pull that 
and synchronize it with the uh, actual runtime. So this two repo structure is pretty important uh, because it allows you to have whatever versions of application available, but separately you have your definition of what should be deployed. And when you only have one target environment, that's not such a big, big deal. But when you have 50 target environments or 100 target environments, that becomes much, much more important. Um, there is a question here. Uh, can Argo CD be used without Kubernetes? Uh, do we really need anything else? Yeah, Argo CD is really only made for working with Kubernetes. Um, there are some really interesting tools you can use. One that comes to mind is Crossplane, which allows you to uh, use Argo CD to synchronize uh, infrastructure that is not Kubernetes. But that is, um, you know, you still need Argo CD deployed on Kubernetes to do this. So uh, that's that's a pretty cool use case. Uh, all right. You know, I should probably just spin up all my environments right now. I wonder if it would let me do that. Let's just go over here. Because I, I also wanted to do um, sync both ways. This one. Well, you can't. Oh, this one's already ready. Oh shoot! This is this is. Uh, I need to work on this. Okay, let's go back. Let's let's. Uh, I'm sorry for being confusing. Let's stay with our. Um, uh, we should be on the um, uh, sinking. Uh, sinking strategies exercise here. Um, okay, again, we've got our app. We've got our. Uh, in this case, we actually need to um, fork this to our own account. Right, so uh, we should be uh, let's go over to go over to the Git repo and go ahead and open a fork. I actually already have a fork. Look at me go. Um, so I'm gonna grab mine. I make sure to make it public. Otherwise, we'll have to add a, a secret and key, which isn't covered in this exercise. Um, so I'm ready to go. Forked it. Let's move to the next challenge. Okay, so, uh, yep, okay. So we're, this, this case, we're actually gonna deploy our own version of this. Um, so we can just do this in the UI again if we want. So this one we're gonna call demo, project default. We're gonna do uh, manual sync policy still. Um, put in your Git repo. So mine is today was awesome, but you should uh, go and fork the repo. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, we're gonna do path simple app again. Destination cluster is gonna be the Kubernetes cluster where Argo CD is installed, default namespace, and we're ready to hit create. Let's see, da -da -da -da. which does not exist. Oh. Well, it helps if you type these in th these uh, these things incorrectly. Good thing it's got some error checking for me here. All right, so now that we've got that done, uh, again we're going to be out of sync. Let's go ahead and synchronize it. Everything should get deployed. All right, everything's deployed, rocking and rolling. And uh, I actually am curious if I'll need to reset this because um, the exercise I think is going to check for, oh, it doesn't, okay, all right. Because uh, we're going to be making a change to our own Git repo uh, and having that update. So let's go ahead and make a commit on simple app deployment.yaml and we're going to change it from V1 to V2. So I'll just do this in the UI. Uh, so we're going to go to our simple app and our deployment. And actually, I actually already did it. <laughs> I knew it because I already did the exercise, right? I should have uh, I should have wiped my uh, <laughs> my get repo. So you're just going to change this to v1 from v1 to v2, and what uh, what will show up, I mean, uh, is that Argo CD would show up out of sync, um, and we could we could force that by hitting refresh, um, and the diff would show you the different versions that were ready. So uh, in this case. You know, I'm all ready to go, so we should be able to move. Um, 
Oh, 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 it should show that the app is not in sync. Okay, so let's just, I'm just going to do it reverse order. I'm just going to change this to V1. Uh, you should be just fine just going to V2. Did I just lose GitHub? My uh, my contingency plan doesn't involve GitHub going down. Oh boy. Okay. Well, it just went. It synced. Okay. So now, if we if we look in the Argo CD UI, get rid of this for a second, and uh, we hit uh, refresh on this. Move this over. Uh, it's now going to show out of sync. So now when we do the check, it'll see that it's out of sync. And we'll move on. All right. So Argo CD also detects uh, changes to the cluster, right? So for this, um, let's go ahead and sync the application. There we go. It's all synchronized. If we do a wait on it, it will actually wait for the uh, application to be synchronized, but it's already, it, it did it super quick, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, let's say that we changed the number of replicas, right? So let's hit that replica change. Um, and it, that actually is going to scale up the application. Now, what does that mean in terms of Argo CD? It means that when we go to the UI, this will now show up as out of sync because, oh, sorry, I hit I hit continue. I, uh, it's going to show up as out of sync because the desired state says that there should only be one replica set, not three. So um, that's that's the issue, uh, right? So now we've picked up a change in production, and we automatically um, we 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 Argo CD noticed that it was out of sync. Now, if we have auto sync turned on, it would have corrected that. Uh, so let's go to. Um, the next exercise, which is going to be, oh, no, let's, let's skip application health. Uh, and let's go straight into, um, this is the sync one. Yep. We did this. So let me close this one and let's go back and we're going to actually go into, uh, secrets now. Um, yeah, so we did our basics. We did our we created our application. Great. We talked about the reconciliation loop. Oh, uh, I meant to do declarative applications. Why didn't I have this on my list? Let's actually go do the declarative applications. Uh, oh, I do have it on here, but we have secrets first. Okay, let's do secrets first. So let's go to um, let's let's talk about secret management. So I wish I could open these in new tabs. That would have been a nice feature. So I'm going to hit launch on this. And uh, while this is launching, we can talk for a moment about um, the uh, secrets secrets stuff. So um, with GitOps, uh, the GitOps standard does not define necessarily how you have to have secrets handled. Um, you can do it a number of different ways. Uh, sometimes people, so for example, the, the default, you know, weakest way to handle a secret is just to deploy, uh, create a Kubernetes secret, right? But a Kubernetes secret isn't really that secretive because it basically is just a base 64 encoded value. So anybody that has access to the secret can decode the secret. Um, so, and uh, once we once it's deployed into Kubernetes, that doesn't necessarily, you know, how is that secret tracked? How is it managed? Those are all very uh, important questions to to figure out. A lot of people like to use HashiCorp Vault uh, for secrets. I think One Password actually just came up with a, a secret controller. Um, within the Kubernetes world, I think the gold standard really is external secrets, which allows you to use a number of different secret providers. Today, we're going to use sealed secrets. And sealed secrets are a really, really cool project. So sealed secrets, let's do Kubernetes sealed secrets. Uh, sealed secrets uh, are basically, um, 
it basically what it does is uh, generates a uh, public key certificate on your Kubernetes cluster. And then when you create a secret, it is encrypted using that public key. And that the only thing that can decrypt what's been encrypted with the public key is what's the, is the private key, which is on the Kubernetes cluster. So you can safely store the sealed secret in your code repo uh, and have everybody have access to it because the only people that can use it are the people that are actually on the cluster. So um, public private key, key encryption is incredibly safe. It is what you use to connect to uh, do SSL and um, it's what you use to do DNS. It's what we use to do everything in public. So this method, some people get a little bit anxious because there is a general rule, which is don't don't commit secrets into Git. Well, we're talking about plain secrets, right? If you if you if you put plain code secrets into Git, then anybody with the Git repo has access to the secrets. And once everybody has access to the secret, it's not really secret anymore, right? Because anybody can have access to it, so they could be using that. But with sealed secrets, uh, those keys are stored encrypted. Uh, and again, using that public key encryption. So it's very safe. So um, once you have that uh, deployed, you can use it. So let's, let's go ahead and use it. Um, first thing we're going to do is, again, we're going to take our sample application, uh, the GitOps certification examples, you should have already forked this, right? We already we already forked it, so I'm not we're gonna need to do it again. Um, I should actually maybe. I don't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna fiddle with messing with my my Git repos right now. Sorry. Um, so uh, when we look in the secrets manifest that's there, secret app. Um, And we go into our, uh, what we're we going to look at here. Oh, yeah. You can see that we've got these two encrypted secrets, right? Um, that you would not want committed to get. Now, these are, these are not, these ones are encrypted actually at this point, right? So these uh, encrypted secrets can only be decoded by the uh, application. So anyway, let's go in and um, check these out. Mm. Some people are asking about image updater, which is pretty cool, um, which uh, is discussed in the level two certification. All right. So uh, first we're going to install the sealed secrets controller. Um, and we're going to do that using Argo CD, right? So again, we could do this from the CI. Let's do it. We'll do it from the UI this time. Uh, so the application is going to be called controller. Uh, it's default project. Uh, sync policy. We're going to go with automatic now. So that means that anytime it detects a change, it'll automatically fix it. Um, I'm I. If we check these two, uh, prune resources means it will automatically get rid of resources that are removed from Git. And self-heal means that if there's any uh, change in how the system is running, um, like if, if something changes in production, uh, Argo will automatically uh, sync over that and fix it. That'll actually trigger the synchronization to happen. Um, so you don't have to have those turned on for this exercise. I just wanted to explain what they were. Uh, but in general, I use them for, for all my production applications. Um, and then we've got our path here, slash Vietnami sealed controller. All right. Uh, again, destination cluster is going to be the default cluster that we're on. And in this case, we're going to change the target namespace to kube system. Once we've got that done, we're going to hit create. And our application, you'll notice, will not stay out of sync. It's actually automatically going to sync and progress, and all of the components are, are being deployed. What are we waiting on? We're waiting on this pod to spin up, which actually has the sealed secrets in it. So let's go ahead and continue. This should be OK. That will take a second to spin up. That's fine. 
Um, someone was asking, what is the role of Dex, the Dex server in Argo? Uh, we'll let that go in the chat. Argo is a true microservice application, right? So um, it has uh, it has a bunch of um, uh, components that that help out its operation. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and actually use kubeseal, which is the CLI tool for um, encrypting secrets that we can then commit to Git. So we actually have unsealed secrets in this. Uh, if we look in here, we've got these unsealed secrets and we've got our sealed secrets. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to use kubeseal to take in our unsealed secret database creds and then make them into sealed secret database creds. If we look in the editor really quick, we can see the unsealed secret is a Kubernetes manifest with our information put into it. Uh, and then once we seal it, these are gonna show up uh, fully encrypted uh, so that they can't be decrypted by anybody that isn't our sealed secrets instance. Um, so now let us go and push these to the UI. So we're going to go to, let's see, open the files in the editor tab and copy the contents to your clipboard, go to the GitHub UI in another browser tab and push and commit their contents into your own fork of the application, fill in the empty files at GitOps certification example secrets. Now I've actually already done this a little bit ahead of time. So you can see that I've already included these ones, but let's update them because um, these ones are not using the same public key, you know, as the last one I did. So first I'm gonna take this DB creds encrypted. So DB creds encrypted. You can see I've got I've got a different key here because this is a different public key that I'm pushing to day for uh, new sealed secrets controller. What is happening with uh, whenever I go to commit this? It like it's giving me grief. I don't know why. Um, it's getting committed though. All right, so let's let's also do the uh, the other resource that's in here is the PayPal cert encrypted. Um, so let's commit this one. Good job. Good job twice. Okay. We could do this in the CLI, of course, too, but you know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting getting that error when I commit to Git. People are gonna be like, Dan doesn't know how to use Git. When he hits commit, it, it throws an error. Uh, all right, so those have been committed. Um, so now that those are committed, we can actually uh, synchronize and deploy them. So we're gonna create a new application based on our repo, the repo that I, I've just been uh, editing. So my fork over here. So we're going to do this uh, again from the UI, create a new application. This one's going to be called demo project default again, automatic sync policy. Um, we can check both those boxes or not. Uh, we don't, we don't need them for the exercise. I always use them though. So I'm just in the habit of it. Um, again, this one's going to be your GitHub account, the one that you just modified. Uh, and the path is going to be dot slash secret dash app slash manifests. You can copy and paste it from the right too. Um, it's probably a good idea to do that. I like to type it out, but uh, you know, sometimes my fingers are too big for the keyboard, I'm getting the mistakes. All right, default, and uh, we don't need to do anything else for this application. So let's go ahead and create it. And this has again its secrets that are sealed here. And what's happening on the back end is sealed secrets is unsealing the secrets and creating a secret that um, the resources can use. 
So that's nice. Nice, 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 nice. So that is an excellent way to do secrets is to be able to use um, Sorry, I'm just reading the chat over here. Uh, so that's an excellent way to do seal, uh, secrets is with sealed secrets. Now, again, you do need to have um, here what we did in the shell when we encrypted the secrets using kube seal. Uh, it was using the instance of um, sealed secrets that we had just deployed. And it was doing that kind of by default for the way that we set up the exercise. But when you go to use sealed secrets, uh, kube seal in real life, you'll need to point it at the public certificate for the sealed secrets instance so um, we're not going to cover that necessarily in this exercise but just a heads up that that is when you go to use this in the real world um, that is one difference you'll have to deal with so now that we've got this going we're ready to accidentally click that button i'm so good at accidentally clicking things uh all right so we've got our synchronization done we've got our secrets done now we're going to talk about the declarative uh way to deploy this stuff so this is actually getting into the the real meat of uh of uh deploying these applications okay so uh, let's go ahead and hit launch on this um probably pretty close to be ready i do see that most of the sandboxes now seem to be setting up so hopefully if you're experiencing any slow times um, they're not too bad. I do see, and I can see how many people are claiming the sandboxes. So that's nice. I think I, uh, I probably over provisioned, you know, maybe change this down to like, all right. So we're all ready. We've got all our environments. It looks like. So, um, for declarative management of Argo CD applications, this is, like I said, super important. So let's talk about declarative management. Uh, the declarative setup um, basically goes back to uh, making sure that everything is done in a GitOps friendly way. Now, you notice earlier when we were using the GitOps, the, the Argo CD UI to create an application, that configuration itself wasn't stored in Git. So that means that we had part of our system, even though that's an application destroying, uh, to applying GitOps, um, because the application itself isn't defined in Git, we're actually not fully doing GitOps right. So uh, we wanted we wanted to be fully doing GitOps. So um, we talked about having a Git rep repository that holds your manifest. Uh, we've got a, a, a Argo CD project. We've got a cluster and an application in Argo CD again is a uh, custom resource, right? Um, so we've been configuring this in the UI. You can see a name for the application. The destination is the server. I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, the name, destination namespace, the project, the source repository, the path, the target uh, revision. And then we can also put in all the information about synchronization policies. So let's see this one. So there's not a wait time on it. Actually should have already be going. <clears throat> In the chat, um, how how quick how how is how have your provisioning times been? Have they been really quick, or have you been going slow? Would love to would love to see um, the feedback in here. I'm lo I'm uh, looking in the Discord, but I guess I should be looking in the YouTube as well. This one should be ready to go. Hmm. <laughs> Um, let's take a look at this example really quick. I'll just show you. So uh, single application. Um, you can see this is essentially what we were looking at earlier. We've got a name for it. The namespace is going to be wherever Argo CD is deployed. Um, and uh, in this case, we're going to tell it to put a finalizer. Finalizers, word of caution for what finalizers are. Uh, a lot of people use Kubernetes without really knowing much about finalizers. A finalizer is uh, basically what Kubernetes looks for to say something is in charge of this resource. Uh, if this resource is deleted, needs to be deleted. If there are any finalizers on it, I need to wait for those finalizers to be removed. So if you put finalizers of Argo project on every resource, what that means is that if that finalizer is removed, 
the resource will be deleted. And something that would remove all of the Argo CD finalizers would be if you deleted Argo CD. So if you have Argo CD deployed and it's managing all the applications and you have a finalizer set on it, and then you delete Argo CD, it'll delete all the resources downstream. So if you're going to use this, this is actually one of the synchronization options when you're creating the application that it shows is, um, uh, is to enable that finalizer. That's what it does. Um, again, project default, the source repository. Uh, we're not going to do directory recursive right now, but you could nest many applications within a directory. Um, and then destination cluster. Uh, and then you can here now see the synchronization policy. So in this case, we're going to do automated. So it's going to synchronize, synchronize automatically. Pruning, self-healing. We already explained that. And um, we're not going to do the allow, allow empty. We're not going to leave that on. So let's see. We've got our exercise ready. <clears throat> All right. So zoom in a little bit more again. Uh, so everything we've done so far has been in the UI. Now we're going to be deploying declaratively. So let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So looking at our directory, you can see we have an application YAML. If we look in that application YAML, it's the one that we were just looking at. We just explained the whole thing, right? So let's apply this directly to the cluster. And again, this one had a namespace set on it. So we don't need to pass that as an argument. Um, so it's going to create the application. And now that we've done that, if we look in the Argo UI, you can see it's actually created the application here, right? What? Oh, I, I hit next. I forgot. All right. So if we look in the, if we look in the application, we can see um, it picked it up and deployed it really quickly, right? So we're, we're rocking and rolling. Now, if we want to delete the application, we can delete it uh, directly by just deleting that resource, right? Um, so if I were to delete it uh, in the UI, um, it would actually uh, delete it. Uh, it just deletes the custom resource. It's deleted that way. So we, we've just deleted the, uh, the custom resource. Right. Uh, there we go. So it's gone. So now let's uh, deploy the three apps resource. So we're going to do this um, in the UI. So let's create new application. We'll call it three apps. And the project is going to be default. Synchronization policy is going to be automatic. Take our URL, leave these guys on. Should just follow the instructions, you know. Uh, all right, set, set our path and then our destination cluster, as always with this example. Now, this what, what we're really telling you here, because you're you probably thinking, how come we always have to say that same thing again? Um, because you can use Argo CD to manage many Kubernetes clusters, right? Uh, so again, we're going to sync, we're going to use one application that we're manually creating to synchronize multiple applications, right? So if we go back and look at our structure, multiple apps, we actually have three application YAMLs in here, three different demo apps. So when we synchronize that, that three application, we actually are going to show all of our other applications. Let me go a little bit smaller second at my drawer so you can see that by deploying this this is an application that actually had three applications so this is an app of apps so all i needed to do to deploy my application is just deploy this and then all my applications are synced automatically now what would happen if i tried to delete this application right well it's actually managed by the uh, synchronization policy of my three apps so this one becomes out of sync and it will resync because I have sell, uh, I've I've turned on healing right. It'll resync and deploy that application again. So now, even if though you're doing stuff in the UI, it actually is automatically getting fixed, right? That's pretty cool, right? Um, 
So let's let's go uh, back into our exercise here. Um, and if we look, yeah, from here, you can see the application is actually made up of these three applications. And if we jump over to them, it's going to take us to those applications. So we can kind of drill down on it. Pretty cool UI from Argo. Uh, one of the things that makes Argo very popular um, is this amazing UI. Great. All right. So we just deployed declaratively. How are we doing on time? We got about 15 minutes left. Um, Let's get a vote really quick. Uh, should we go and sh do you want to see deploying with Helm and customize, or do you want to go straight into progressive delivery? I feel like people want to go do go do Canary and Blue Green deployments, probably. But let's see in the chat. Shout it out. Shout what you want. Give uh, give thirty seconds of uh, for people to vote here because uh, I think a lot of people use Helm and they want to use it. Um, and they want to use customize, which are great. They're not very different from the stuff we've done. It's it's very it's very straightforward. You specify a Helm repo or a customization repo. I think people want to see progressive delivery, uh, and it looks like um, in the YouTube. Let's see. Check really quick. Give me one second. Give me one second to check. Just wanted to see what people are saying. Yeah, people say Canary. Oh, some people do want the helm. Let's do, uh, tell you what, let's do helm. Ooh, we're getting close on time. Uh, let's do helm. We will, and we'll, step, we'll skip customize. Um, and I'll do a quick aside on customize. So uh, while this is creating, um, one of the th interesting things you can do, so I don't know if people are familiar with customize. Uh, so people are saying, show us application sets. That's actually in the next one, but uh, application sets are very cool. Um, they, they let you, we used an app of apps just now, but application sets let you uh, generate applications programmatically. Um, so they're pretty cool. So let me show you an example of a. Uh, well, let me let me. I'll show you an example really quick of uh, of both things. So, so um, when you're using, uh, this is kind of a cool pattern. But when you when you're using Helm. There is a limitation within Argo CD, which is that when you deploy a Helm chart from a repo, uh, if you want to specify a values file, it needs to be in that same repo. And um, sometimes that's uh, frustrating for people. So one of the things that I actually have started doing, uh, we'll see if people, people care or appreciate this, but one of the things that I've started doing is I actually use Customize to deploy my Helm charts now. <laughs> and this is nice because uh, not only can I specify a values file that is local um, to my repo, but I also can override values inline and I can use customize to actually then uh, do patches and stuff on top of it. So for those of you that aren't aware of customize, Helm is a great package manager deployment tool for Kubernetes, obviously, that uh, most people are familiar with. Uh, customize is really a configuration management tool that often um, serves kind of a similar purpose. But with customize, uh, you can um, override values more easily. So you can just have a base manifest and then you can just say, hey, go override these values for it. Uh, so I actually really like it because uh, when I'm making something, when I'm making a Kubernetes uh, application to be deployed, um, I don't have to... Um, I don't have to uh, create a values file that figures out every permutation that people might want to want might want to customize. Instead, I can just use a customization and say, "Okay, I'm going to override this this component." Um, and I'll show you like a, a, another example of an override really quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go to. Um, Uh, and I'll show you even really quick. Um, this is an example of an application set. 
So what this application set does is it finds everything under my apps folder with a that's target cluster, elite cluster, um, config.json, and it generates an application for them. So this is actually my own private. Uh, this is my home lab cluster that I'm using here. Um, you know what? Actually, let's just skip over to progressive delivery. I think we've explained it. We didn't have to go through and, and do the example. Uh, I hate to to walk away from that, but let's go let's go do a progressive delivery and show that really quick. So um, this should launch pretty quick. But uh, the way that so anyway, we got a, we got some asides. We showed we showed a few little random things there. Hopefully that wasn't too jarring and, and confusing. Um, so oh, we can explain it with the exercise because it's already ready. Sweet. So let's do that. And I'm going to increase my size here. So let's look at our uh, example application here really quick. So the way that um, Argo rollouts works. Now, Argo rollouts is, again, a separate service from Argo CD, but they work brilliantly together. So uh, what, Argo CD, what Argo rollouts does um, is it relies on a custom resource called rollout. And a rollout should look very familiar. It looks a lot like a deployment. And that's because it basically everything is the same as a deployment, except there's additional strategies that we can set on it. Now you can also uh, create a rollout that just references an existing deployment. So you don't necessarily have to create a whole new um, object to use it, but let's, let's go and use this uh, application. Um, all right. So we looked at the, blue green one really quick let's go actually and do a rollout here and the resource they should be starting pretty quick for everybody now finally so i just learned a lesson to start these earlier uh install the argo rollouts controller so like i said we do need to install that so um we'll we'll go ahead and use the ui to do this uh, again you should be doing it declaratively um, which we wrote we learned uh, already Project is going to be default. We're going to do automatic sync again. Yes, all that jazz that we love. Um, get our source repository and set our path. Uh, Yep, Kubernetes cluster is going to be the local one again. Namespace is going to be Argo rollouts. And once we've got that done, hit create. And this is going to generate our Argo rollouts instance. Back out. So you can see there are a number of uh, components that this is going to use. Now, for progressive delivery, uh, just for those that aren't aware of it, progressive delivery basically allows us to uh, do typically two different strategies. One is blue green and one is canary release. With the blue green deployment, you spin up your new application, new version of your application, you run some tests, and then you switch all the traffic over to the new version. And if something fails, you can switch back to the old version. With a canary release, you basically expose progressively uh, traffic to your users. So, but ten percent of your users will start getting the new version if a he health check fails or some some um, something so it doesn't isn't working well then it reverts back and you're rocking and rolling you know so so the real purpose of blue green deployments and canary releases is to limit the blast radius of changes and allow for automated rollbacks in the case of catastrophic failure so uh people often when they first hear about canary releases they say oh that that sounds awesome i could use that to test new features uh well testing features is more of a feature flag thing but um, testing a release is a canary blue green progressive de deployment progressive delivery thing. Um, all right, so this is going to finish syncing for a minute. Uh, I think we can actually just go to the next step um, while that's finishing up. It's going to put the Argo CLI in for us really quick. All right, so now we've got the Argo CLI. It may still be syncing up, but let's go ahead and uh, get our application deployed. And we can, um, while that's completing its synchronization. Yeah, it's still syncing, right? Yeah, 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 it's still syncing. Just takes a minute. All right, so we're going to create a new application for our demo app. And we're going to do default. 
uh, automatic synchronization again. Oh, sorry, synchronization policy on this one's gonna be manual for this exercise. Um, now, of course, we could have we could have just done all of this automatically and declaratively, right? Um, but uh, then then you wouldn't get the experience in the exercise of seeing how all this stuff works together. Okay, I'm really good at clicking. Dot slash blue green dash. And to the local cluster, and uh, let's go to the default namespace and create this thing. So once we create it, let's go ahead and synchronize it. So this will deploy all the resources. So we can do our demo. Hmm, why is my... Uh, my synchronization happening so slow. Ooh, one or more objects failed to apply. Dun, dun, dun. What happened? The namespace, uh, you forgot to enable the create namespace. That's why it didn't sync. Oh, good thing you're paying attention. I'm not paying attention, clearly. I'll create that namespace. Thank you. You're right. You're right. We specified a namespace and I didn't hit auto uh, auto create the namespace. So now we should be good to go. Oh, because it's already still working on it. It might even be faster to delete it and reapply it than to wait for it to not complete. Um, attempted. Dude, good catch. You, you were watching me do it, weren't you? And you were thinking, that's not going to work. Uh, we've got our custom resource definitions, but yeah, none of the other stuff synchronized because we didn't, we didn't have it on the um, application. Um, do I want to delete? Well, if I delete it, it's going to have to unsynchronize the other objects. Hmm. Let's do it this way. It may even be faster just to reload it. It, it, it will eventually solve it. Um, it's just because it's in, in synchronization right now that it's uh, it's like getting it out of synchronization can take a little while. So I'm trying to think of the fastest way to make it make our lives uh, work here. What's up with our rollout here? Oh, the rollout's not doing anything yet because the rollout controller is not on. So I well, what's the fastest way to get back to state? I think fastest way is to restart the exercise. That'll be the fastest way. I think that should be quick. We're actually at time anyway, but let's let's finish this thing. Oh no, because this instance is still here. There we go. All right, it deleted it. So now let's um, redo our deployment, which isn't going to let me go back, is it? Um, I don't think I have the application defined in here. Oh, and I can't go back within my exercise. Oh, I borked it. I'm pretty sure, did I? No, I did a specific. Well, this is why having it declaratively done would have been a good idea, huh? Um, we're actually at time right there now. Man, I do want to finish this though. Let me look how bad the. Let me check if how much I can go over on time. Um. Oh yeah, no, we've got, we can do it. We got, we've got the time. We've got the time. I got, it. we can do it. Uh, all right. How do I reset this thing? To back to its original. Because I borked this up. So if I go back to this exercise, no, it won't let me leave. Hmm. Okay. 
Extra foot down manually. Leave. And then try to restart it. It's definitely going to restart it. In this case, uh, <laughs> my uh, the exercise is working too well for me. Okay, let's do this. I have an idea. Sorry, folks. So, uh, Costas says that maybe you can restart the exercise or simply deploy the second one to the correct namespace or press the skip button. All three should work. Okay, I think I think this will put me back in proper now. Let's see. No. Yeah. So the uh, the exercise uh, maintains your state so that if you wander off on accident, it doesn't have make you restart everything, which is really nice. Except then I kind of bork stuff, so I wanted to fix it. Um, let's see if that takes a second. And thank you for uh, for yelling about the chat. <laughs> now people are like, you skipped the helm stuff for this? Sorry, folks. And to me, uh, in the meanwhile, there's a question in the chat. Can you yeah. explain a bit more about sealed secrets? Uh, yeah, let's see. Explain a little bit more about sealed secrets. So, um, like I was saying earlier, sealed secrets, uh, essentially, oh, dang, I do this again. Skip. Um, like I said earlier, so sealed secrets, uh, you have a couple of components. You have your controller, which is installed on the Kubernetes cluster where the, um, where you want the secrets to be deployed to. And then you have uh, that controller creates a public key certificate. And then you use a command line tool, kubeseal, to actually um, encrypt the values. Now, once you've encrypted the values, anybody, the, the, the certificate, the public key certificate is considered not secret. That's the whole point of public private key encryption. So you can make that public certificate free and open to everybody. And you can let everybody uh, have access to that certificate to write secrets to the Kubernetes cluster. So all your developers can have access to it. Um, I don't know if I've ever, ever seen anybody just like publish theirs fully to the internet and just said like, hey, go deploy to it. But you would be safe to do so. I mean, the uh, public private key encryption is basically bulletproof. I mean, um, so uh, so you don't, there, there really shouldn't be any worry about it. Um, any Any worry about using it is really just lingering worry probably from people being so, uh, you know, properly paranoid about committing secrets in plain text, right? So um, once you run the kubeseal command, that basically checks the public uh, key certificate that kube, uh, uh, the, the, kube con the controller has, and then it encrypts that secret and puts it into, uh, and then you can commit it to Git safely, and then only when that resource makes it to the proper deployment uh, cluster where that public key was used, will it be able to um, actually unseal the secret. Uh, typically, most people use that use uh, sealed secrets controller use a unique certificate for every cluster. And, and so that means that every cluster you want to deploy to, you need to seal secrets for. Um, and when it comes to directory structure, that's not something that we've spent a ton of time talking about. But if you look at like uh, Argo CD Autopilot, which creates um, an overlay structure. So just to show you that for a moment. Uh, so this creates uh, an apps folder. And then every um, application basically has overlays for each environment. Uh, so in this case, we're using customize, right? Um, and I could have my additional uh, secrets, you know, sealed just for this environment in my overlay. Um, in this case, I'm applying a patch that uh, sets a specific IP address. You know, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, overwrite example using customize, but uh, yeah, you can do you can do it that way. Um, 
Let's see. And I'm like stuck here. I'm trying to see if there's any way for me to reset this because I did want to do a canary release. Yeah, I could deploy a second one to the correct namespace. Uh, let me look. Let me look in. Um, da, 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 da. That's in the instruct example. I want to like force and let me look really quick. Sorry, give me give me two seconds here. No worries. And in the meanwhile, make sure to follow Dan. Uh, at the red today was awesome. Uh, because today was awesome. So uh, Dan has given a beautiful workshop on Argo CD and especially thanks to Christian and uh, uh, even Costas. Uh, Costas has like created 80% um, of mm -hmm. the workshop. So I, I think the workshop is dope. It's, it's really nice explaining all the concepts. Then you have the labs, you can do it. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, make sure to you know do all the labs uh, at your pace uh, after the workshop as well so that you understand each and every concept and you uh, go through all the uh, instructions given in the lab and um, you are able to do that um, so definitely uh, do this and after that obviously you know you have to take the exam so that you can uh, get that fancy certification badge and you can share that on social media so uh, i think that really is awesome and another pointer that Dan mentioned that ArgoCon is coming up. It's in person and virtual. Definitely uh, check that out, um, ArgoCon. And uh, there will be a new course released at ArgoCon that will include some of the advanced concepts, like one was mentioned in the chat um, application sets. So you can, you know, uh, if you are interested in in some of the advanced concepts um, of Argo CD, then definitely check um, check out ArgoCon and register for the virtual event. And there are amazing talks and session lined up as well. Yes, thank you for all those shout outs. Um, okay, so let's let's do uh, let's actually just jump into the canary instead of the blue green and uh, we could do a we could do a blue green uh, deployment over there as well um so let's let's talk for a second about those two different deployment strategies so uh blue green like i said what it does is you get uh so let's say let's say if you have you have an application with like three replicas right um with the blue green deployment you'll spin up three new replicas so you'll have version one which we'll call the blue version and version two, which is the green version. That's why it's called blue green deployment. And each one will have three replicas. And then what Argo rollouts will do is it'll switch uh, the ingress, the service to point to the new version all at once while keeping the old version alive so that uh, as it runs tests, if anything goes wrong, it can actually automatically revert back. And let's talk about those tests for a second. So um, Argo rollouts health check uh argo rollouts supports a whole bunch of health checks so let's look at uh analysis so uh by default prometheus datadog new relic wavefront a custom job a custom web poll kayenta um cloudwatch and influx db these are all supported uh out of the box for running experiments with canary or blue green deployments so you can automatically check those things and once those once you run your health check, you have your policy that can be set to automatically revert or whatever. Now, you don't necessarily have to use a policy. You can actually use progressive delivery with manual steps. So you can have a pause step that just checks for you to say, okay, go and deploy this. You click go and it will deploy it. Um, and then you can also revert back uh, the same way. So you can use the UI or the CLI to do that. But setting it up declaratively means that you can uh, all this stuff happens automatically when we were setting up this um this workshop we actually debated quite a bit uh doing the declarative version first because that's the way we expect most people to do it 
But the problem was that it works so well and so quickly that it's really hard to see what's happening. So in this exercise, you actually do it manually. There's one at the very end that has, has you do it declaratively so you can see how that all works together. So everything comes together that we've been talking about. Um, now a canary release works a little bit differently, uh, right? A blue green keeps uh, basically like a hot spare, right? Uh, in case the health check fails, it switches back. Um, so that really just takes the sting out of deploying. Canary release is gonna work a little bit differently where it's gonna expose, instead of all of your traffic to the new version, it's gonna expose a portion of your traffic to the new version. Um, and for this one, we're gonna need a good, uh, a, a good API to use. So, all right, we're gonna follow all the instructions more carefully. Um, we don't need to look at this example too carefully right now. Let's go straight into the challenge. We'll pull it up on the canary. So we're gonna be using uh, Ambassador as our ingress controller because it does support these advanced features. Um, as far as using Argo rollouts goes, for your supported uh, for your supported ingress providers, Ambassador, AWS, LB, Istio, Nginx, SMI, which is what Linkerd uses, traffic, and then we are adding support for about 10 more in Argo rollouts very soon. Um, so stay tuned for that release. It's, it's coming. All right. So let's deploy the Argo rollouts controller. And let me not mess it up this time. I should have just waited for everything to uh, synchronize in the end because it took a lot longer to reset everything that it did uh, when I tried to delete it. So I made some mistakes. Mistakes were made. All right. So uh, again, synchronization policy automatic. Yes. Self heal and delete. Auto create the namespace. Remember in the very beginning when I was like, this auto create namespace thing is super important. You should all, you should use it. Ha ha ha. And then I forgot to. Well, sometimes you have to learn by uh, doing the wrong thing several times. Um, all right. So this is going to go to Argo rollouts. You can learn from my mistake, folks, and you don't have to make it. All right, so let's create that. And we should get this synced up and running. This is about a 20-minute adventure uh, for me not checking a box. That's why it's good to do things declaratively. Doing it manually, this is a, this is chump business, you know? Um, that's not the way to do it. You want to do it, you want to do it automatically. Look at that. Look at that. Look how quick it synced. Jeez. Um, all right, so that synchronization has happened. We've got the Argo rollouts controller. We're ready to go. And even sitting here, I'm just skipping examples. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, let's get our canary deployment happening. The canary is more interesting to look at anyway than the blue green. Um, you can go back and do the blue green deployment as well. Um, all right, so first we're going to install Ambassador. Again, we're going to do this in the UI. Uh, I think, I think the reason that we decided to always do these in the UI, uh, well, not always, but we show, cause we show you how in the, uh, in this, how to do it declaratively is just because it gets you really good hands-on thinking about, um, all these options and stuff. So it's a really great way to learn. Uh, I actually never use the RFC UI to deploy applications. I always do it declaratively and so much so that every once in a while I'll do something in the UI. And it like won't work right away. And I, I'll be like confused about it because I actually don't use it that much um, because I always do it uh, declaratively. Um, that's just my habit. So, all right, we got our ambassador. And uh, did we check our auto create namespace? We didn't. Almost caused catastroph catastrophe again. Um, ambassador. All right, so now that this is all ready to go, let us deploy Ambassador. So this is gonna deploy uh, Ambassador to be my ingress provider. Um, and it's just using uh, the Ambassador chart. So if we go back and look at our examples, this is actually uh, just a Helm chart. So um, in this case, we actually are deploying, we got our, we got our Helm uh, deployment going on here. Um, I think I set automatic sync on it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. It's syncing. So we can see all the components coming out. Um, this isn't a talk about Ambassador, uh, so we're not going to spend too much time talking about it. But, um, you know, you've all used Ingress controllers, 
you're aware of it. All right, so once I got this going, we're going to check and make sure Ambassador is installed. Looking good. We'll let that, that rollout's going to finish, and now we can get into actually doing the Canary release. <laughs> Blue green will happen in business loss. <laughs> Well, you ought you automatically pick those rollouts, you know, uh, so it's nice to be able to roll back really quickly. All right, so let's deploy our demo application. Uh, Ambassador's all synced now, so let's do our demo app. So we're going to do demo, project default, synchronization. We're going to leave on manual um, for this one. Do our certification example. I actually will sometimes just always leave auto create namespace on, even though I know that it's uh, the namespace is open because it's like, well, just leave it on by default and then I don't ever have to worry about it. All right, there's our Canary app, destination cluster local, default namespace. All right, and we will hit create this application. So right now, this one is out of sync. So let's sync it. You're going to see why we're going to do manual sync in a second, because for the demo, it makes more sense. Um, wait, did I check automatic sync? Synchronization. I think I said I was going to not do it, and then I went back and did it. What did I do? <laughs> Disable auto sync. What am I doing? You can just leave, leave the auto sync off. <laughs> I was like, we're going to do it manual. And then I just went back. Well, that's why. And then I explained how I, I just do things by default. Oh my gosh, hilarious. OK, so uh, we're going to click live version. And this is going to show us uh, the application that's been deployed for demo should there it goes so uh it looks like everything is blue and version one so what this is um this request dashboard this is basically a bunch of iframes that show us what version is deployed everywhere um so now uh we can actually let's check out uh, Argo C rollouts does have this optional CLI. Let's not uh, get into that yet because let's just let's trigger a deployment and then we'll um, do it that way. So uh, let us do we're going to use the CLI to change the rollout. So we're going to do it manually. So K okay, Argo rollouts set image simple rollout. So I should just copy the rest of this. So um, what this is going to do is it's going to tell the Argo rollouts controller to set a new image, and it's going to say change the web server simple to this 2.0 version uh, for the Canary. So now that that's done, uh, we can actually go and look at the rollout to see what's happening. So we're going to do kubectl Argo rollouts, git rollout, simple rollout. And this will show us that currently the Canary version is out with three replicas, and then there's a whole bunch for the old replica set. Now, if we were to go and look at the live dashboard, you can now see about, uh, what is it, like 30%? are getting the Canary version. Uh, and the other ones are getting the, the live version. Um, so basically, it creates these two replica sets and handles it this way, right? So uh, this is showing the Canary release in action. Um, and right now, in our rollouts definition, which uh, we can talk about and let's actually go into here and we'll go into oh whoops uh oh not this one this one um if we look at our canary app 
and we look at the I haven't looked in here in a while. Actually, let, we'll we'll just we'll, we'll go for the exercise. I don't need to I don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. Um, so let's move it up to sixty percent. We're gonna do this manually again by going into the shell, and we'll do rollouts promote simple rollout. Now, if we look at the controller again, we're gonna see that now it's about sixty percent of the traffic. So now it's not three replicas, it's six. And if we go back and look, you know, it was three before. If we look at live, we're going to see a lot more yellow than we did previously. So it's like 60%. Um, again, just randomly to our users. And then uh, we can... That happens so quickly, we don't need to throw a watch on it. Um, they, it happened immediately. So once we're done, we can repeat that again. And it's going to send more traffic. And we can, oh, sorry, for me, re repeat the promote again. And it's going to send more traffic. Now it's about 50-50, uh, promote again. Let's promote it a final time. And now it should be um, moving towards completion if we throw a watch on this. You can see... Yeah, so now everything has moved to the new new revision. And if we look at the live, you can see everything is the new 2.0 version. So that's a canary, canary in action. Um, yep, let's go to the next thing. Okay, so we do have in here, kind of as our final thing, is the canary exercise uh, done progressively, yeah, using GitOps. So let's do that. So in this case, and I actually, I didn't pre-roll these ones, so actually it would take a little bit longer. Um, once you're done with all these exercises, now, if you go back and look at what we did, we skipped a few sections. So there are a few sections you might want to go back through and it'll show you if you've done them or not. Um, and uh, if you've missed those, you can go fill those out and they'll have a little checkbox next to them. And then when you go to the very end of the exercise, um, there's the recap and then there's the get offs fundamentals test. And once you do this, you pass it and you will be get offs certified level one. Level one is not that hard. You know, it's really just about getting hands on with all these things, understanding all these concepts. But uh, once we finish this, you can probably go take this and you'll get a certificate of completion, throw it on your LinkedIn, throw it on Twitter. Um, Code Fresh loves to see people getting certified on Twitter. I love to see it. Uh, good way for me to see who you are because you're showing that you're certified. Invites other people to do it as well. Um, someone's asking, will this be recorded to YouTube? Yes, it's being recorded to YouTube right now, baby. We're good to go. Uh, so if you if you do the um, we didn't talk about the um, we didn't talk about the release strategy here. So let's look at that for a second. So when we look at the rollout, uh, you can see it actually s specifies the strategy right here. So it says Canary version, what's the stable service? What's the Canary service? Who's doing the traffic routing? In this case, it's gonna be ambassador and how's it gonna be mapping on there? Um, that's gonna be a little bit different for each provider that you use. And in this one, we have set weight, to 30 and then pause for two minutes, set weight to 60 and then pause for two minutes and then set weight here. Now, normally what you'd probably do is you'd actually have an addition to your pause step, you would have a uh, health check step that would check Prometheus and say like, oh, show me how well this is responding. <laughs> well, now I'm, I'm worried <laughs> people in the chat are saying, thanks, baby. Awesome, baby. So, Okay, as an aside, I'm gonna throw into the Discord. Uh, I was I'm referencing a uh, a Sean White moment for those that don't know Sean White. He was um, this amazing. Uh, he was an amazing snowboarder. Um, he's won so many medals, but uh, he 
he won his first Olympic medal when he was like 16. I'm putting it in the workshops chat. Um, you can just search Sean White, Mountain Dews, baby. Because uh, <laughs> I, I think everybody, I don't know. Maybe it sounds like I was being sexist or something. But anyway, if you watch this, um, uh, they he's under, he's like 18 or something. And he's talking, to, he's being interviewed by uh, somebody. And anyway, he, he says that line. It's really funny. So you can check it out. All right, skip that. Forget all that. Let's put it behind us. Let's uh, let's 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 do the uh, fully automated version of these certification uh, of the uh, deployment. So this one's fully automated. Yes, we've explained that it's automated. We've shown it. Let's hit start. Um, so let's see. We need to install the Argo rollouts controller again. Yes, we do. Uh, you know, I think we should go back and we should do have some more of these be declaratively or, uh, you know, cool. And we're going to do project default, sync, automatic, prune, self-heal, great. Auto-create that namespace. Avoid the pain. Grab our repository. And dot slash controller yes to the destination cluster local namespace is going to be Argo rollouts. Create that. Let's go. I'm not even going to wait for it. It's going to be fine. Um, a lot of people think that they need Istio to do canary releases. You don't. Istio is great. I like it. I like Istio, but uh, you don't. You don't have to have it. It's not. It's not required. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, great tool, but it's not required for canary. One of the advantages of using something like uh, Istio is I think you can do um, header inspection, which allows you like if you put somebody into a canary release, uh, it means that. Um, they stay in the Canary version and they don't bounce between versions. Whereas if you're not using something like that, um, and uh, they could potentially have the new version and then move to the old version of the application. And um, depending on the changes that you've made, that could potentially cause issues. So you know, just something to be aware of. Um, all right, ambassador. And let's double check, auto creating space, yes kind of did that one on autopilot all right so ambassador rocking and rolling let's go back controllers deployed <laughs> just talking about memes over here uh Oh, somebody's asking, how many times can you take the test? I don't think that there's a limit on how many times you can take the test, as far as I remember. Um, I think it's pretty quick. So I, I think you can you can just take retake it several times. Um, all right, so let's create our application. Again, this is going to be our automated one, right? So project default, sync manual, because we're going to be triggering that sync. Uh, and we're going to use our own GitHub repo for this one. Right, so I'm gonna go back to my forked version. So in this one, you're gonna be using your forked version. Uh, we can sure leave that on. And now we're gonna do the canary app timed. Canary app timed. And let's do this guy and we're gonna do default and everything else is good so let's hit create let's go down in size a little bit so uh now that we've got this one created it's not going to be deployed so if we go to live traffic nothing's going to work here because the service isn't deployed so let's synchronize it once Creating my rollout, creating my resource group, creating my pods. This slide is going to start to work for, 
for us now that it's deployed. Uh, you can see the pods are coming online. That's why it's reporting no healthy upstream. Let's do it again. Looks like pods are there. Sometimes they take a second to start. All right, pod requests are going. They probably are going to be V2. Oh, no, they're all V1. All right, sweet. All right, now, um, again, you can do all of the same rollout stuff. Great. Let's move forward. We're not going to list all the rollouts and look at the status of them because nothing has changed yet. So now a change is going to happen when we activate it in the Git repo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and update it in here. So remember our uh, Canary app timed is the one that we did. And we're going to be updating uh, the rollout.yaml. And here we're going to change this to V2. Commit that. Now this one is going to go automatically on the timer, right? So as soon as this syncs, and it may have already synced. Oh no, didn't we have manual sync turned on? I think we did. Let's refresh this really quick. Okay, it's out of sync. So right now, there's not going to be any rollouts happening. So if we if we check out the rollouts, it's going to say, hey, everything is deployed. There are no changes going on. Don't need to worry about it. Live traffic, everybody's getting V1. So now let's synchronize it. And once we synchronize it, uh, Argo is going to immediately pick up that there's a Canary release version, and it's going to deploy that Canary release. As soon as these come online, it's going to start routing the traffic. So now you can see about 30% of the traffic. And now this one is going to play out automatically. So we don't have to do any intervention. It's going to wait about two minutes. Then it's going to deploy the next set, and then it's going to deploy the next set. So uh, again, in real life, are you just going to have pause steps? No, you're probably going to have... A, uh, a health check that's checking Prometheus, looking for error rates, looking for service response rates, um, looking for things like that. And this is going to allow you to automatically uh, do your canary. And if there are any issues, Argo rollouts is automatically going to roll back those changes. And so uh, the, the failure state would be that um, revision one will become the, uh, the stable revision or revert to that. Uh, we could force this to move forward by pushing a promote uh, manually to it, but we just let it roll and uh, it'll take care of it. So it's about 55 seconds. While we're waiting for that to finish, um, I just wanna thank you for being patient with me, uh, going through with this whole exercise with me. I'm so glad that um, you all could come and I I'm excited to see who gets certified. So hit me up on Twitter. I would love to see uh, who gets certified from this. And again, for level two, uh, that's going to be happening at ArgoCon. So go register for ArgoCon. We'd love to see you there. Um, get the certification. I did mention that there is a hosted version of Argo CD you can use that CodeFresh provides for free. We're basically doing for uh, Argo and GitOps what GitHub did for Git. So we have a hosted version of Argo uh, and it works with Argo rollouts and that we provide a great UI for doing all this stuff. So go check that out just at codefresh.io, go sign up and uh, start playing around with it. Love to see what you think. Uh, we're coming up two minutes. We just hit the two minute mark and we're gonna see it start to kick off the next, there it goes, progressing. Now it's kicked off the next set. So now, uh, now more of my traffic is moving towards the new version. Everybody's rocking and rolling. <laughs> uh, that's great. It just makes you happy watching this stuff happen. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, that's uh, that's my final. If uh, people are asking about Argo swag, where do you get Argo swag? There's cool Argo t-shirts. Um, Codefresh makes a lot of cool Argo swag. We make some really cool stickers that we do give away. Uh, one of my favorites is this Just Deploy It sticker. Um, I think that one's rad. I have to keep, keep one of those on my laptop. We're going to be giving away a bunch of those at ArgoCon. That's a good way to do it. But another way to get swag is uh, I have noticed that people who make lots of noise on social media and really talk up uh, CodeFresh, uh, they, they tend to get a little DM sometimes. 
and uh, maybe a little offer of uh, some swag. So I'm not saying it's going to happen. Just saying, hey, you know, it's always good to be visible. Um, so, yeah, we're rocking and rolling, folks. We've got GitOps happening. You're doing it. Uh, go get certified. Good luck getting it completed. Um, and that's all I've got. Any uh, Anything, Sam, that, that you want to add? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so thank you so much, Dan, uh, for this amazing session. And thank you so much, uh, people, for sticking to the end. Uh, that's that's very important. You uh, you were there. You have seen the complete journeys, the complete GitOps, uh, the Argo, at least the fundamentals. Uh, so in the first level of certification should not be that difficult for you to achieve. And give a shout out uh, to Codefresh. And uh, today was awesome on uh, Twitter uh, on what you learned today and also after getting certified so that he knows that you got certified. And again, for the swags, it's like, you know, uh, you go to the conferences, uh, you write blogs, you tweet, Twitter threads, uh, be visible, again, learn in public and all the stuff that, uh, you know, myself and other cloud native collaborators keep on talking all the time. So you do all that stuff and swag is not nothing very much, you know, dream of a thing. So it, it happens, people have it, you get it, you just have to do some stuff. So keep learning and uh, keep posting your learnings on, on Twitter, uh, tag the right people to make them aware of your work that you have been doing and, you know, thank them wherever you can because such workshops are, uh, you know, you don't get to create them very often, you don't get to attend them very often. So thanks to Codefresh for building up the environments for you free of course, for trying you get, trying those. So I think all these things are really, uh, really good. And uh, uh, next set of workshops are definitely, uh, you know, already there. So you make sure you go to kubesimplify.com slash workshops. Uh, the next one is next week, next Monday, again, seven, same time, 7 a.m. PT on Kubernetes security. Then we have Kubernetes monitoring. Uh, then it is, I think the chaos one and the last one is uh, the service mesh. So there are awesome workshops lined up as well. Uh, keep learning and uh, keep the momentum going on so that you are accelerating this year on your DevOps journey and maybe being part of somebody's team uh, who is taking the workshop. So you can always check out the careers page of, uh, you know, uh, and see if any openings are there, apply to those, um, make sure to give shout outs to the companies who are funding these workshops and make sure to join ArgoCon because conferences uh, helps you with your, whatever you were asking swag and also a lot of lots and lots of learnings and a new course is also going live at ArgoCon by cold fresh for the advanced stuff so make sure you get certified before that so that you can take the next one and thank you so much dan for uh for tuning in and you know uh, giving this amazing uh, workshop and thank you everyone bye all thanks <laughs>